That's right, you're tuned into another week of Still Fist Supercharged. More action, less pat. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. And now, introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. Standing five foot seven inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds, making his MMA debut, training out of Groundworks, MTI, and Steel Fist Management. Please welcome Michael Jody. All right, folks, we got Michael Jody, age 34, weighs 155 pounds. Standing five foot seven, amateur record of 0 and 0, but he's got a 2 and 0 record in Muay Thai. Uh, his gym is Groundworks Gym. Coaches are Gustavo Rodriguez and uh, I don't want to ruin that guy's name. Seth Makai, Pula Striking, Mallory Rogers Strength and Training Conditioning. Uh, yeah, it looks like his style is uh, grappling. Yeah. Standing five foot six inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Representing Hidden Valley MMA, making his MMA debut. Please welcome Anthony Potter. Okay, we've got Tony Potter, age 44, weighs 155 pounds, standing five foot six. Also, AMI record of 0-0, so another debut fighter out of Hidden Valley MMA. Under crew, John Valentine of Brandon Guzzo. Yeah, those are some great coaches right there. I mean, his fighting style is wrestling. Um, he's a highly decorated wrestler, two-time Nevada State champion, and former college wrestler at ASU, which is a great school. Um, and his high school record was an amazing 67 and five. Well, you know, what I'm curious about in this right here, um, where is it going to go? Is it going to go to the ground, and are we going to see uh, Michael go ahead and use his jiu-jitsu, his purple belt jiu-jitsu on the ground, or are we going to see Tony Potter just go ahead and take it down and use that wrestling to negate that jiu-jitsu? All right, let's watch these guys fight and uh, figure figure out what, you know, what, what, what's going to go where. Well, for you guys at home, we have Tony Potter, who's in the red bleed-out shorts. It says bleed-out in the black right there. And we have Mikey in the other corner. He has the red and black Venom shorts. And um, they have a little bit more black on them than Tony's do. So that's what we'll be referring to these guys. Um, also, you got to mention the stash that uh, Mikey's got. He's got the little cool stash right there. And he signals no hand touch. They are coming out to fight directly. Nice leg kick by him. And nice punches by him. Good hands by Mike. Does the right thing, getting him up against the cage, trying to weather that storm. Dumps him right on his back. That's the wrestling we see out of Tony Potter. Tony, what you gotta do is posture that head up. Don't let him get you behind the head. Start throwing some uh, precise punches without getting out of control. Keep, a, keep their opponent's head up against the cage. Yeah, and I see Mike on the bottom. Looks like he's fishing for a triangle or an arm bar of some sort on that side. He has his left leg all the way up on the shoulder. He grabs the leg, um, and it looks like he's trying to lock it, but I guess uh, Tony might have a little bit too big of shoulders, and it doesn't appear as though he's in the exact correct angle to finish this off. Oh, and we got some fingers in the cage here. Yeah, Dave did a great job grabbing those fingers out of the cage. Um, that's just, you know, reaction. When you, you're near a cage, you need a little bit more leverage, you kind of tend to grab it. <laughs> you know, you see Mikey right now. He's on the bottom right now. It looks like he's trying to fish for some things. Tony's on top, maintaining his position, um, but he's not really dropping any blows from here. I'd like to see him drop some blows kind of like he did right there, do a little bit more damage, score some more points in the judge's eyes, um, and uh, maybe even wear out Mike for round two. And, and also, uh, from the bottom here, you want to see Mike maybe even uh, uh, throw some shots from the bottom to try and open up that submission. He looks like he's going straight for a submission, which is great. He's, he's got intentions to finish the fight. But also, you want to set that up with some, with some bombs uh, from underneath and tick your opponent off a little bit. Yeah, you see Mike right now has that open guard. Um, it looks to me as though he's kind of trying to throw that leg up and secure that triangle again. He got the leg up on the other side um, earlier in the round, but was not able to do anything with it. 
Um, maybe he's going for a sweep right now, um, but you can see Tony maintaining his position, using that wrestling base that he has, and you know just trying to finish it from there. Mikey trying to work from the bottom here. He's he's getting pretty flattened out on his back. Uh, you kind of want to get a sit up from the bottom like it looks like he's doing. Uh, that's where you're going to create some space and you can scoot out. You can uh, throw your legs up for another submission. You definitely don't want to let yourself just get flat right there or parked up against the cage like he is now. He's just getting kind of folded up and it's really not the best position. Well, and that's the difference between uh, when you're in a cage. It's a different dynamic. You know, if you're sitting there on a wrestling mat, you have the whole mat to secure that takedown. If you're in a jiu-jitsu competition, yeah. you have a whole mat there as well. Um, you know, Mike has not uh, dealt with the cage very often, at least not in a authorized sense, shall I say. You know, not at any specific show or competition. So this may be new for him. Right. As the, as the ref, uh, Selyestead, wasn't looking, it looked like he almost kind of attempted an elbow from the bottom. Uh, looks like we're going to go to round two. two. The only big thing that I'm noticing right here is Tony Potter, 44 years old. Um, you know, Mikey, he is 34, so we got a 10-year difference. Let's see if that comes to fruition in this fight at all, or if you see one of the old guys like me come ahead and get that victory. Wow, I think they both look great for their age, and they look like they're just barely starting to have fun, honestly, which, honestly, even 22-year-olds is kind of cardio. You know, it's, that's a lot to expect. Uh, Tony Potter gets himself a takedown, but his neck falls right into a submission. It does, and it looks like he had it for a second, uh, but he popped his head right back through using that uh, grappling uh, base that he has, that wrestling base. Um, and you're seeing Mike goes and gets that full guard, but kind of keeps it open right now, trying to work for various positions from here. You're not seeing Tony drop many shots from here. I'd like to see him posture up and drop some of those heavy shots. Mike's in a decent position right here in the fact that he's not parked up against the cage just yet. He's got this whole mat to work with, and he's got his arms secured. It looks like he has a Kimura going on on Potter. I heard Gustavo Rodriguez behind me um, yelling to him. That's one of Mikey's coaches. I don't believe he's in his corner right now, but I heard him yelling, go, 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 go. Mike, so Mike is still listening to his coaches who aren't even in his corners. Mike wants to hold on to that guard, and don't forget to use those hips. Yeah. Oh, and there, there gets the tap. the tap. Good fight to both these guys. These guys are tough. Yeah, that was a great fight that I saw between these two guys. You saw Mike come out there. He was on his back the whole time, but he went ahead and uh, finished it off with that uh, submission victory, Kimura victory. Um, but you also saw Tony Potter, you know, with uh, a heart of steel right there. You know, he came out there and did not give up, fought through it the best he could. And, uh, you know, much respect to both of these warriors. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of times you, you don't just fight with your arms, you don't just fight with your hips, you gotta fight with your heart too, and you gotta throw your entire heart into that submission. Uh, and, and that's exactly what happened, you got the W. Yeah, he did a great job, you know. Well, I see Gustavo in there, Rodriguez is in the cage right now, um, giving his student uh, high fives, jumping up and down. Um, like I said, we could hear him screaming from behind us um, instructions on that Kimura. So much props to those guys in that team. And a uh, great job for John Valentine and Brandon Guzzo, getting your fighter prepared and ready. He looked really good out there, you know, especially for his age. So I can't wait to see these guys back in the cage again. That was, a good, that was a good fight on both their parts. These, these guys are so, both warriors, they would have they definitely right, been a good three rounds. Thank you, round. you. Two exciting rounds. Let's make some noise for them. Come on. And your winner, by the way of tap out at one minute and eight seconds of the, of the second round due to Kimura, Michael.
night, everybody. We got Rowdy Acres coming down. He's 39 years old. Um, he weighed in at about 145 pounds. He walks around at about 5'9". He's got an amateur record of three wins and two losses. Um, he's coming to us from uh, Idaho, from Team Hardcore up in Boise. Um, his coaches are Brandon Shuey um, and Colton the Madman Vaughn. I mean, Colton's have fought here before it's still fist, and he put on a great show. And also uh, Blake Howard. So, I mean, he's got a good crew behind him, it seems. Okay, Ryan, we've got Hal Mitchell coming up. He's 24 years old, stands five foot eight, amateur record uh, three and one. Uh, emphasizes right here, still not with any gym, which says that he is proud to be an independent fighter. That's what he wants to do. Uh, this. Yeah, you know, these guys, you know, I'm looking for a great show right here. You know, these guys put on a good show. We haven't seen anything out of Rowdy. You know, he hasn't fought since 2009. But from talking to the guy and looking at the guy, looks to me like he's ready to go. And uh, like you mentioned, Hal himself, you know, is coming out here with his own mix of boxing jizz. And uh, he's going to put on a show for us. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Rowdy would have walked here from Idaho to find somebody, <laughs> so no need to thank Rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, for your fans at home, we got Rowdy. He's in the black and white with a little bit of red uh, Valetudo style shorts. And we have Hal, who's in the black tap out shorts, just the plain black shorts. So they come out, and uh, Rowdy comes, like he said, in your face. Hal tries to grab, it looks like, a guillotine choke right now. Um, Let's see if Rowdy goes and aborts this takedown and instead tries to defend the choke. Um, you know, it looks like it's underneath the chin, oh, but he's got know, her deep. Yeah, these ones are somewhat really hard to finish. Rowdy sticks his hand up and says, I'm okay. He sticks that thumb up. That's Dave Sally said, no, I'm good. He's doing a good job trying to defend that. He's turning into the body of Hal. Um, you know, and it looks like he's trying to fit his hands in there right now to pry those hands there apart. You go. He just did. Now he's on top. Let's see what type of damage can be done. What you want to do right oh, here, he Rowdy? Oh, he switched to a triangle oh. almost. How does have some boxing jizz, jits, doesn't he? Rowdy is coming with some tough punches right now. Trying to put some weight down on Hal Mitchell to take the leverage away from that triangle. And like I said, uh, you know, park him into that corner, park him into the into the uh, cage pad, and and take away his uh, take away his leverage. Yeah, it takes away his ability to go ahead and, you know, escape those uh, hips and things like that and get that movement that he needs, you know, get the correct angle for that triangle choke. And he's never been able to actually secure it. He looks like he's trying to now transfer to an, an arm bar. bar. Yeah. But Rowdy, you know, he's in your face. He keeps coming, keeps throwing punches, and it's getting how to aboard his game plan. If I know anything about Hal Mitchell, he was hoping for a tough opponent because he's been walking through the competition. And uh, yeah, Rowdy's, Rowdy's ready to, to bring some action. Takes yeah. him right up against the cage. He's got his back. Yeah, he's got one hook in. Um, you know, it looks like his grappling skills are kind of out there. I mean, when you see guys come out, they're very scrappy. They're in your face like they are. How do you deal with that, Kevin? Uh, like I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of naturally a passive person. And if somebody wants to come out and be aggressive and be a bully to me, uh, I'll, I'll turn it right against him. I'll, I'll use my passiveness to my advantage and say, yeah, go ahead and bully me, sir. <laughs> so, somebody comes running at me, I'll let him fly right over the top of me. <laughs> Well, you know, you see uh, Hal right there is trying to lock something up in again. He really is trying to work that submission game since he's been stuck on the bottom, so I give him a lot of credit there. Um, I just wonder how much credit he's going to be getting in the judges' eyes. I think the judges right now are going to be looking at it as it's pretty much Rowdy's round. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the risks that you take. If you're going to throw on submissions, you better start finishing them or come to close to finish them because the, the, re the judges are going to see that you're on bottom and... You know, there, there's really nothing you can do about that. You just got to finish your fight. Uh, it looks like Hal might have taken a shot in the eye right there. Uh, he, a shot or a poke? I couldn't I didn't see it. He was covering his eye. He looks like he's all right. I'm, I'm sure he's gonna, <laughs> sure, sure he's gonna rub some dirt on it. And <laughs> we're about onto the onto the end of this round too. Yeah, I heard that click. We're probably gonna be over any second. And Dave's right there to stop it. Uh, look, Rowdy does a nice job. He lets his opponent up. Um, it looks, yeah, I think you're right. Hal's eye looks like there's something wrong with the eye as if he got yeah. poked possibly. Well, it looks like it's a moot point anyways because Hal's going to continue either way, and we got a fight on our yeah, hands, guys. I'm pretty sure he could pull his eyeballs out and say, okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I'll just, I'll just poke my eye out. 
and take it all the way out. Yeah. You got Rowdy who's ready to touch hands. Um, like you said, you know, Hal's going to touch with him, and then here they go. I expect Rowdy to come right after him like he did last time, push him against the fence, bully him, um, yeah. and, and that's where we're at. Uh, I like these opponents. They got so much respect for each other, and there's a tap. Oh, uh, and looks like Hal went to sleep right there. Yes, he did. You know, he locked in that, Rowdy locked in that guillotine choke. Yeah. Uh, finished that very quick in that second round. Um, these guys really put on a show for you guys. You know, what tough people we got going on here. And way to see Rowdy come down here, you know, at, uh, I believe, 39 years old. And he comes down here and puts it down for you uh, fans just to show that he's still back in the game after being out for five years. and entertainment you can handle with all your friends here at Leatherheads Sports Bar and Grill located in Draper, Utah. Get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. Now I'm gonna shine. Life is good. I'm doing fine. And gonna do it right and do it again. Yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me. So gonna share it with another. I got to show to give. Let out. I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening. And together make a beautiful life. And if you want to see, then come along with me, that's right. And if you want a good tomorrow, it's pretty simple, got a plan to like to follow. And if you do, you have a future real bright. And it's a combination of consistency. Come on and say, oh, 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 oh,
Pat, tell the people at home what we got going on November 14th. What don't we have? I mean, we've got super heavyweights, got heavyweights, got females. We've got a little bit of everything in this card. If you thought the last one was good, you don't want to miss this one. That's right. Join us live at the Rail Event Center for Still Fist Fight Night Wrath, a 21 plus event. Uh, we touched on the main and co main last week, so let's talk about the female fights. We've got Brenda Enriquez coming back to the cage, meeting Mallory Rogers out of Groundworks Gym. Should be a great fight. Also, got two newcomers to the sport Alyssa Westergaard uh, going up against uh, Chelsea Howard. Now, Alyssa's joined Hidden Valley MMA, Chelsea Howard's at Lobato MMA. Both new to the sport. Very exciting card, very exciting fights. Make sure to join us. Check us out at Still Fist Fight com for your tickets today. This is sponsored proudly by Leatherhead Sports Bar and Grill. Please visit them in Draper, Factory Outlet Mall. They offer great food and drink menu, as well as birthday parties and UFC fight nights. This is an amateur bout scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. This man stands five foot five inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. He is an independent fighter with a record of zero wins and three losses. Please welcome Shiloh Julander! All right, folks, we got Shiloh Julander, 22 years old, fighting in the 135 pound weight class, standing five foot five. Amateur record is 0 and 3. Uh, he's an independent fighter. I see him at uh, Fact of MMA in my gym quite a bit. He's kind of one of those guys that wants to be independent. He wants help from coaches, but he wants to be that independent fighter that, uh, you know, comes out and makes a name for himself, which, you know, hope hopefully he, he comes out on the winning end of this. I want to see him do well. So. This man spends five foot, five inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds, with an amateur record of zero wins and one loss. Representing Hidden Valley MMA, please welcome Victor Enrique Pena! All right, Kevin, we have Victor Enrique walking out right now. Um, he's 31 years old, they're waiting at 135. Uh, he's about 5'6", and he's got a record of 0-1 right now. He's training over there at uh, Hidden Valley MMA with uh, those great coaches, Crew John Valentine and Professor Michael Macio. Um, you know, he's got a lot of striking because he's 
been in a lot of street fights in Mexico, but now he's training the right way, and he's trying to have experience and learn how to professionally fight, or I guess not professionally yet, but more of a structured fight instead of that street fight. Yeah, well, for you guys at home, uh, we have Victor, and he's in the black and green, uh, I guess somewhat Valetudo style trunks, and we have Shiloh, who's in the black trunks. Um, we got a referee out there, uh, you know, he's making sure everything's fine, he's checking them, make sure they didn't bring anything into the cage, giving some final instructions right now, um, you know, kind of showing them where the illegal spots to hit are. There are rules in MMA, like some people might not understand. We do have rules, there are things you cannot do. Um, again, for the safety of the fighters. This is not an alley by any <laughs> means. No, it's not. Shiloh coming out real confident, uh, looking to circle, looking to do all the right things. Hey, nice jab the Shiloh put out there. You know, Victor's looking pretty good too. Nice and calm, you know, pumping that jab out there a little bit. Um, you know, these, t these two look like they're ready to go at it. Uh, Shiloh ate a shot there, but he's keeping his composure. He's gonna wanna keep his back off the cage, circle out of there. Well, Shiloh's throwing, those, about him. Shiloh's throwing those big, heavy rights, you know, to counter that, you know, which is seeming to work a little bit. Maybe changing a little bit of levels and a little bit of head movement might help, uh, you know, uh, as well. Uh, I, I do notice that both these guys are eating shots, and it's actually picking up the intensity of this fight. These guys are here to fight. Oh, there it goes. Oh, Shiloh Victor, goes out. Victor. He eats a big shot. Very Shiloh's nice. out. Very doctors, nice shot by doctors Victor. Doctor's coming into the cage to check him out, make sure he's okay. He had a big shot there. Yes, he did. Good to see him up on his feet. Oh, yeah, Shadow's a trooper right there, and he's a tough kid. So, you know, seeing him get back on his feet, I'm sure he wants to get right back up, show everyone he's okay. He just got caught, and that happens to people sometimes. Right, you know, sometimes it's it's not the best thing to plant your feet and just throw bombs at each other. You want to have some defense, you want to have some composure. It's not a matter of who can hit each other the hardest. It's a matter of who can fight smarter and who can finish each other. Well, and it looked like, you know, Victor hit him right on the button, too. A few times, yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't just, you know, one big hard shot. He had hit him on the button a couple times, and that last one just kind of laid him down. Yeah, I could see some swelling coming up on, on Shiloh's head. Uh, Chastity, uh, hopefully he got a pair away. And your winner, at 46 seconds of the very first round, by way of TKO, Victor! That's right, still fit supercharged. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. <laughs>